Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 18, Planar Kinetics of a Rigid Body, Work and Energy. This module discusses conservation of energy for a rigid body. The objective is first to determine the potential energy of conservative forces, and this is something that we have seen previously for particles, we are going to go over it again, and then apply the principle of conservation of energy to solve dynamic problems. Now, just to remind you that a force F is considered to be conservative if the work done by that force is independent of the path, meaning that the work done of that force depends only on the final position and the, uh, the initial and final position. So, how did you reach, or how did you go from point 1 to point 2? What was the path? Was it curved? Was it straight line? This does not matter. So, in that case, uh, it is considered conservative force. For example, the weight of a ball when you throw it depends on the amount of elevation, whether if it was a projectile motion or if you throw it vertically upward, then it is a conservative force. Uh, on the other hand, friction, if you move a certain distance through a curve, then you are covering more surface area than if it was a straight line. And in that case, friction force will be more. So friction force is not conservative. Okay, now typical forces that we encounter in dynamics, these are the most common ones, are the gravitational force, which is the weight, and the elastic forces like the springs. So the conservation of energy says that the sum of the kinetic and potential energy at any location should be the same at any other location. So you can say that T1 plus V1, where T is the kinetic energy and V is the potential energy, should equal to T2 plus V2, regardless what is position 1 and position 2. Now, just to remind you, a few uh, important points. Whenever you do the potential energy, it has two components, one which is the weight or the gravitational force, and for that one, always you have to identify a datum. So if I choose that this is my datum, okay, then at position one, I have to look if my item is above the datum, then the potential energy done by the gravity is going to be positive. If my potential energy is below, uh, sorry, if my uh, final position is below the datum, then it is negative uh, 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 distance, which will give me, by the way, negative potential energy. So just pick the datum. If you are above it, it's a, a positive uh, energy. If it is below the datum, then it's a negative potential energy. For the spring, the formula for computing the potential energy of the spring is half Ks square. And S, to avoid any confusion, S is basically the amount of stretching or compression. Okay, at that position. So for example, let's say if I have two positions, one and two, then S1 is going to be the length at position one minus the unstretched length. If I have position two, then S2 is going to be L2 which is the length at position 2 of the spring, minus the unstretched length. Sometimes you are given the length, and therefore you have to do this. Sometimes the amount is directly given to you, therefore you don't need to do the subtraction. So the analysis procedure, usually you start with drawing two diagrams, one with the body located at its initial position, and then another diagram at the final position. And you have to show the datum, the lengths, the forces acting on it, and everything. Then you compute the potential energy at each position. So you can calculate Vg alone, then Ve alone, and then you can add them together. Okay? And these are the two formulas that you are going to use. After you do that, you compute the kinetic, the kinetic energy, which could have translational part as well as rotational part. Once you have all of these, then you apply the conservation of energy equation. So, uh, nothing new in the, with the theory itself. 
But let's look at the application of this with examples. So let's start with the first problem. Pulley A and the attached drum B have a weight of 20 pounds. So A and B together have 20 pounds and a radius of gyration of 0.6 feet. If pulley P rolls downward on the cord without slipping, no slipping means there's no uh, friction, there's no movement, uh, 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 relative movement. So determine the speed of the 20 pound crate C at the instant S equals 10. And this is the definition of S. Initially, the crate is released from rest when S equals 5 feet. For the calculations, neglect the mass of the pulley P and the cord. Okay. So, to start with this problem, first, I'll have to uh, 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 look at the problem and, and see what do I need. Uh, I'm going to have two diagrams, and in this case, they're going to be almost the same. So, the first one, you have the drum like this. You have these two, and then you have a pulley here. No need for the attached uh, 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 part, so that one is the same. And the distance here was originally 5. And you have the weight here of A and B. And there is no weight of here, but it is attached to the crate that has a weight. And it's called C, I think. Yes. And this is position 1. And for position 2, you're going to have exactly the same, except that you're going to have the distance equals to 10. So for position 2, just to save time, we're going to say that this is going to be 10. So it is the same thing. Okay? Now, let's look at the differential pulley, this one, P. Let's look at this part in here, and we're going to analyze it. Uh, keep in mind that we want to find the speed of the 20 crate C, so therefore I need to find the speed at this point. Now, let's look at the drum AB. Now, this is rotating in order for the crate to move downward, so this is rotating with an omega. So we call it omega AB. This point has a velocity, and this point has a velocity. Let's call this VB, and we're going to call this VA. Now, what do, what do these two values equal to? Let's go now to this part, and let's, let's analyze these. So I have the pulley, the differential pulley. This point, VB, is the same point in here. So this is VB. And VA is in the same chord, so it is the same point in here, VA. Therefore, what is VB? It's equal to omega AB multiplied by the radius of drum B, which is 0.4. So this point will have 0.4. Okay, so this equals to VB equals 0.4 omega AB. And this point is going to be following the same procedure, which is VA, it's going to be omega AB multiplied by the radius of A, which is 0.8. So this is going to be VA equals to 0.8 times, so VA equals to 0.8 omega AB. Now, if you remember from the instantaneous center of zero velocity, if you have two velocities that are parallel, then what you need to do is connect the starting point and then connect the heads and, and, and just draw the line from there. And they will show you the two lines will uh, uh, intersect at the point which is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Okay. Now, this distance is x is unknown. Okay, and then here you have the radius for this one uh, uh, is given as 0.2. This is the radius. So I have here 0.2, and I have here 0.2 as well. Okay, now 
how to find this x distance basically from similarity of triangles i have this triangle first and i have the second triangle in here so from these two i can say vb which is 0.4 omega ab over x so i'm taking this one over this one then i'll do the same i will take this one which is, so this should equal to VA, which is 0.8 omega B over this whole distance, which is the two radiuses, 0.4 plus X. Okay, omega AB could cancel between the two, and then I, I end up with the only unknown, X equals to 0.4 feet. Okay, so this gives me the value of that one. Now, since I need to solve things for C, if you remember that the problem asked you to find, determine the speed of the 20 pound crate C at the instant S equals 10. So for now, I'm going to say, uh, 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 just find the relation. So I need to find this VC. Now VC, okay, over the distance, which is, 0.6 because you have x which is 0.4 plus 0.2 should equal to 0.4 omega ab over x which is equal to 0.4 that we already calculated that one so again similarity of triangles this could give me a relation between vc and omega ab as 0.6 omega ab now I have a relation between VC and omega AB that I can use in my problem. So, next step, let's find the uh, 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 mass moment of inertia. For Now remember that uh, I have a radius of gyration that is given to me of 0.6 for the system of AB. Therefore, IAB will equal to Since I have the radius of gyration, the theory says that, uh, or, the or the formula is M for AB, and then you have KA squared, MK squared, which equals to, uh, I don't have the mass, I have the weight, which is 20 pounds, over the gravity 32.2. This should be multiplied by the radius of gyration, which is, 0.6 square and this gives you a value of 0.2236 slug feet square slug is the unit of mass for the british system uh, uh, for units now since the problem was originally at rest then t1 equals 0 now let's look at t2 how many masses do I have in this problem? First of all, I have the drum AB. Uh, it is rotating only. So I have half I omega square. And then pulley P has no mass. C has a mass and it's moving in a translational fashion. So it's have, it has half MV square. So I only have half MC VC square plus half. I, A, B, omega, A, B, square. Okay. I'm going to put the values that I have in here. So I'm going to have half multiplied by M, C, which is 20 over 32.2. So let me take what was the mass of C. Uh, okay. A is a third drum. B has a weight of 20 pounds, so that's the one. And also, the crate C has weight of 20 pounds, so they are both 20. So I'm, I'm right in here. So this is half MC, which is 20 over 32.2, times VC. Instead of VC, I'm going to use this relation, 0.6 omega AB squared. So I'm going to write it here, 0.6 
omega a b square plus half then i a b equals to 0.2236 multiplied by omega a b square I can add all of these together in terms of omega a b and I will get point two two three omega a b square okay now the next step is to look into the potential energy of the problem sorry so we finished that one now we can look into the potential energy now uh, uh, the datum first of all let me define my datum for this problem I'm going to use this as my datum since I already have the distances clear in, in this part. So I have the S value defined to me. So I can identify things based on that datum. I have no springs, only the weight. So for the uh, 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 system of AB, the pulley and the uh, 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 drum, uh, they are not moving vertically therefore there is no uh, potential energy done by by them the only thing i have is four point c so it was initially s was five and then it became ten therefore i will start by position one in that case v gravity one was i was below the datum so it was minus the weight which is 20 mg which is the, the weight which is 20 in this case times the distance which is 5 and this will give me minus 100 pound feet and then for v gravity 2 again i am below the datum so it is minus the weight is 20 and then the s value was 10 and this will give me minus 200 pound feet and these are basically V1 and V2 because I have no other potential energy acting on the system. Now apply conservation of work and energy. T1 plus V1 should equal T2 plus V2. Now this is zero. And then you have minus 100 should equal to point two two three omega AB squared minus 200 solving this will give me that omega a b should equal to 21.15 radians per second now the problem asks you to find the speed or the velocity of the crate c when s equals 10 therefore i can go back to my relation of vc which was equal to 0.6 omega AB, which will equal to 0.6 multiplied by 21.15, and this will equal to 12.7. So 12.7 feet per second. And this solves the uh, problem for you. Now, let's look at another example that we have in here. So, the, if the 6 kilogram rod is released from rest at theta equals 30, you can see theta is defined in this figure, it's this angle. When theta was equal to 30 degrees, it was released from rest. Determine the angular velocity of the rod at the instant theta equals 0, meaning when the rod AB becomes horizontal. The attached spring has a stiffness of 600 newton per meter with an unstretched length of 300 millimeters. So the first thing in this type of problems, as you can see, you only have the weight and the spring. So the problem is a conserved, uh, all the forces are conserved. So I can solve it using conservation of energy. So for this, I'm going to draw two diagrams, one for position one and one for position two. So, first of all, for position one, the rod is something like this. At this point, so 
that is fixed from here. Now let's go with the spring. It's somewhere. So let's look at the spring. So the distances are 200, 300, and 200. Okay. So I'm going to attach the spring in here. Okay. And this is for position one. And you can put the distances that this is 200. And then you have the distance between this point A and the spring is 300. Okay. So this point is fixed. And here it is 300. And then you have 200 in here. This is the horizontal line. Okay. Now let's look at position two. Okay. And it goes down here. And this point is fixed. So I'm drawing it relatively the same thing as the other one. Okay. So this is the point. Okay. So again, this is 200. And this distance is 300. And this distance is 200. So this is position 1 and position 2. Now. Uh, what I might need in this problem, as you can see, I'm given the unstretched length of the spring. Okay, the unstretched length of the spring is given. Therefore, let me try and find the length of the spring at each location. These points are A, B, and C. So this is A, B, and C. So let's look at position 1. Let's look at S, B, C. In position one okay this equals to I have a triangle here this distance is given to me as well equals to 400 so this is 400 okay this distance again is 400 so I have a triangle this is not a right triangle it's not an angle of 90 degrees therefore it's going to be equal to square root of the first length squared, these are in millimeters, so we're going to do meters. So it's going to be 0.3 squared plus 0.4 squared minus 2 times the two lengths, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, cosine the angle between them. Now, let's come to the angle and see what is this angle. This is basically theta, which was originally in position 130, and the angle here is 90. So you have 90 plus 30 gives you 120. This angle is 30 degrees. So this gives you cosine 120 degrees. Okay. And S, B, C, 2, as you can see, this is a right triangle. So this is a right angle. So this is much easier. In this case, it's equal to square root of 0.3 square plus 0.4 square. Okay. Now, if you com compute each of these, it's going to give you 0 0.6083 meters. And the other one is going to give you 0.5 meters. So I have the two lengths ready for me. Uh, now, to solve any other things, I'm going to use for the gravity. I need the datum. So this is going to be my datum. Remember, this is the center of gravity for the for the rod. Okay. Sorry. So this is the center of gravity. Now let's start in solving the problem, getting all the terms that we need. Let's start with the gravity. V G one will equal to. Let's look at position one. My center of mass 
g is below the datum, so it's going to be minus mg, so it's going to be minus. Okay, mass is six kilograms multiplied by gravity 9.81, then multiplied by the distance. Now, if you look at it, this is 300, and the distance is halfway here for the center of gravity, so this is basically 150. This is 150, and you have the angle is 30, then the vertical distance here has to be 150 sine 30. And instead of 150, I'm going to use 0.15. So multiplied by 0.15 sine 30 degrees. If you carry out this, it becomes minus 4.4145 joule. Okay, let's look at the gravity at position 2. Uh, I am at the... Uh, datum in position two. I am exactly at the datum. Therefore, I have no potential energy, and this should equal to zero. Now let's look at the elastic potential energy for the spring. So at position one, remember it is half k s one square. So this should be equal to half, and then you have the spring constant given to me as six hundred. Multiplied by S. Remember, S is the current length minus the unstretched. So in position 1, what is the current length? 0 0.6083. So this is 0 0.6083 minus the unstretched length, which was given in the problem as 300 millimeters. So minus 0 0.3. All of this is S. So put the square in here. Okay, this should give me a value of 28.51 joules. And then repeat the same thing for elastic 2. Have half k is 2 square equals to half 600. And then current length. 0.5, if you remember. So we computed this to be 0.5. So it's 0.5 minus 0.3. All of this is S2. So it has to be square for the bracket. This should equal to 12 joules. Okay. Therefore, potential energy 1 equals to Vg1 plus V elastic 1. It's good to separate all these into smaller steps. So that to avoid any mistakes. So I'm just adding the two values together. 28.51. And this should equal to 24.096 joules. And then you have the uh, 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 second potential energy equals to Vg2 plus V elastic 2, and this should equal to 0 plus 12. This equals to 12 joules. So now I have the potential energies 1 and 2. Now I need to compute the uh, kinetic energy. So before I do that, I need the uh, uh, mass moment of inertia for the rod. So I equals to. 1, so this is IAB, so it equals to 1 over 12 MAB, or the rod AB, L square. So this equals to 1 over 12, the mass, which is 6, times L, and if you can see here that the length is basically going to be 0.2, which is 200 millimeters, plus 0.3 for the 300 millimeters, plus 0.2 for the 200 millimeters. So this gives you a total of 700 millimeters, or basically 0.7. Okay. So this is 0.7 square. 
And if you carry out this calculation, it gives you a value of 0.245 kilogram meter square. Okay. So now what I have to do is to do the kinetic energy. Originally, it was released from rest, so T1 equals to 0. Now for T2, let's look at the problem and analyze it. I have a rotation of the rod, so it is rotation where the center of mass is not the same as the center of rotation. Therefore, I'm going to have two terms, one which is uh, I omega square plus half MVG square. Okay, so I'm going to have two terms to be added in here. So T will have half M A B V G square plus half I A B omega A B square. Now, V G and omega A B, I can find the relation between them. VG should equal to omega AB times R between center of mass and center of rotation, which is in this case equals to 0.15. So I can do this multiplied by 0.15. So going back here, I'm going to have half mass of AB is 6 multiplied by 0.15. Square omega AB square plus half, and then you have I equals to point two four five multiplied by omega AB square two four five. Okay, and then omega AB square. Okay, now in this case, I have uh. T1 plus V1 should equal to T2 plus V2. In this case, T1 is 0. Plus V1 equals to 24.096. Should equal to half 6.15 square omega AB square plus half point two four five omega a b squared and then you have the second potential energy which is twelve joules in this case so plus twelve solving this will give you finally omega a b to be equal to seven point nine eight radians per second okay and this is your final solution now there is another way of solving the problem that you can do it uh, and i'm gonna just delete these just to show you what you can do with the uh, 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 what you can do with the put, uh, kinetic energy of this problem that you can solve it in a different way uh, so i'm gonna keep these so let's look at this part of the problem what I can do is that I can apply the parallel axis theorem to calculate the value of the I value. So instead of what we did in here, calculated I, A, B, I can do I at point A, which is the fixed point. So this will equal to I, A, B plus M, the distance square. So this will equal to IAB, which is 1 over 12, 6 times 0.7 square, plus the mass, which is 6, and the distance between G and the fixed point, which is uh, uh, A, point A. So the distance between them is 0.15, and I can add this, this problem to say point. 1 5 is square. This will give me a value of point 
at kilogram meter square. So this is I at B. So when you have the mass moment of inertia calculated at the point of rotation, so T1 is zero, then the kinetic energy becomes simply half I omega squared. That's it. I do not add the velocity. If I take I at the center of mass, Ig, I have to add Vg. If I have I at the center of rotation, then I do not have to add Vg. And in this case, it becomes half 0.38 omega AB squared. And if you do this summation, you are supposed to get the same answer at the end. So there are two different ways of doing it. You can choose whatever suits you or you feel more comfortable with. So with this, I conclude uh, uh, this uh, module, and I hope that it was useful to you and that you enjoyed it, and I wish you the best of luck with your studies. Thank you.